Let's step to the actual interpreter code now. We've got interp, which takes an expression and an environment. We don't have to deal with the list of definitions anymore. We don't return a number anymore. We return value with a capital V. We can just consider all the cases that for the interpreter now. So if we have a num e expression, that means we've already got an n. It used to be uh, that for this result over here, in that case, we would just return the number n. We still want to represent return the value in, and to turn it into a value, we just wrap it with a numv. In the IDE case, we've got a symbol for a variable name that we want to look up in the environment. Now that our environment maps names to values, not just numbers, it's still just lookup. How about plus e? When we have plus with two expressions, the template tells us that probably we want to interpret the left, left expression, and probably we want to interpret the right expression. In fact, that's what we want to do. We want to get those two numbers and add them up. This is what we used to write, but we can't just add with plus anymore because these are not numbers. Interp returns values, not numbers. So what we're going to do instead is write our own function, num plus. Num plus is the plus for curly that takes values instead of numbers and we can write num plus like this. Give me a left value and give me a right value. As long as both of those things are numbers, then I can extract the numbers out of the numvs, add them up, and then put it back into a new numv so that I'm returning a value. Right. If either l or r are functions, if they're not numbers, then we can complain, just not a number. So this is what we have to do to replace the plus that's in plate uh, to have a num plus that will work on values instead of just numbers. Num times, you can imagine we're going to need that. It looks awfully similar. In fact, you can imagine that I made this slide by taking this code and copying it over here, which is exactly what I did. And that's terrible. It's terrible to copy and paste code because if I made a mistake up here, then I've copied that mistake down here. We would like to abstract over this pattern. The only thing that's different between num plus and num times is the plus or times right here. So we would like to be able to abstract over the plus and times, which turns out to be easy because plus and times are just functions. So here I've made a general numop, which takes the operation and left and right, does the same thing, and then applies the operation once it knows it has two numbers. And I can define num plus to be numop with plus, and num times to be numop with times. So with that num plus, I'm done with the plus e case of the interpreter. Since we've abstracted and made it easy to define num times, I'm also done there. The Letty case is next. Uh, in Letty, it turns out to be exactly the same as it was before for all the same reasons. We want to interpret the right-hand side. Now we get back a value instead of just a number, but that's fine because bind deals with values. And we put that binding in the environment, and then we evaluate the body where that substitution should apply. So let e is unchanged there. The new part is lam e. So let's look at what we should do here. For lam e, uh, what we have to work with, and what the template would suggest, is that there's a body and that's an expression, so we should interpret. But here is a case where the template suggests something that's wrong. We don't want to evaluate the body of a function until the function is called. When we have just lambda by itself, we should return a closure. So instead of interpreting here, we don't interpret. Instead, we make a closure. We keep the body together with an environment and an closure. The only other thing the closure should remember is the name of the argument n. We put those together. So lambda creates a closure and there's nothing else to do. We just return that closure. A lambda, in other words, is similar to a literal number expression. When you have the number 7, the value is just the number 7. When you have a lambda, the value is just the function represented by the lambda, except conceptually we we have to uh, apply those substitutions in the body, and we implement that by keeping the body together with the environment. We defer evaluating the body until the function is called. How is functions called? Uh, that's what appy. Appy handles function calls, so let's look at that. We have a function expression and an argument expression, so the template would suggest that in the result here we want to interp both of them, and that's going to be right. We need to go get the function, go get its argument, and then we can substitute the argument in for the body. Speaking of the body, where do we find that? It's got to be in the function produced here, right? Interp doesn't necessarily give us back a, a function, it gives us back a value, but we can do a type case and see, do we get a closure back? If so, we've got a function to call. If not, then it's a number or something and we can just complain about it being not a function. Right? 
Uh, in fact, it's always a number if it's not a function right now, but in the future we may have other kinds of values. So we'll just say not a function. Okay, this gets us closer. We are trying to evaluate the body of the function since we just called it. We have the argument value here and we have the name that the function uses for the argument. So we need to map this name to that value. That is uh, going to be the job of bind. And then after doing that binding, we use it as we interpret the body. Where do we add this binding to? We always add a binding to an environment. And as we saw in the previous example, we use this environment that we had, had stuck together with the body um, to extend. It's important to use cmv here. If we use env here, then we've gotten things mixed up. We're using the wrong substitutions with the wrong expressions. So it's crucial that we use cmv, the one that's stored with the closure, as we evaluate the body that is uh, encapsulated in that closure. That's it. That's the whole interpreter. Um, if you look at lambda.racket, you'll see uh, that code right there. You'll see some test cases and look up. You won't see substitute anymore because we've simplified things with environments. You won't see function definitions and look up function anymore because we've simplified that by just using uh, lambda uh, and using let to bind function names as we need to.